heat and cold. Shakespeare told us to fear no more the heat of the sun, nor the furious winter's rages, and natural gas now rises above other fuels to beat those forces back. Natural gas is abundant, at least in some parts of the world, but how do we get it from regions that have it to regions that don't? So we cool natural gas until it condenses into a compact liquid. Now we can ship it on special tankers. Natural gas is mostly methane with varying amounts of other hydrocarbons and impurities that can freeze in fouled equipment. We remove the impurities in the pretreatment area of the LNG plant. Here we also remove heavy hydrocarbons, inert gases, and other gases that accompany the methane that is natural gas. Now we can begin to liquefy this clean gas. Many technologies can do that, but all are based on the same cyclic process that serves our kitchen refrigerators. That means we need some kind of refrigerant to remove heat from the gas so it'll condense into liquid. Here's how it works. First, the liquid refrigerant expands from a high pressure to a low pressure, turning it into a cold mixture of liquid and some vapor. Next, it passes through a heat exchanger that uses heat from the natural gas to turn the refrigerant into pure vapor. The natural gas is now a lot colder, and we can compress the refrigerant back to its high pressure. We cool the hot refrigerant in another heat exchanger until it condenses back into liquid. Then we expand the refrigerant again to repeat the cycle. The key to cooling and condensing natural gas into LNG is flashing the liquid refrigerant. And once the gas is LNG, we store it in tanks at very nearly atmospheric pressure. Liquid natural gas looks like water, except that it boils off at room temperature. It's odorless, colorless, non-toxic, and virtually non-flammable. The cryogenic LNG stays in these storage tanks at a constant temperature between minus 159 and 162 Celsius. Evaporation helps keep it cool and liquid while it's stored on land or in the ship. We capture the vapors and either burn them for fuel or we recondense them and send them back to storage. Who then uses the LNG? Typically a power plant or industrial user. They convert the liquid back to a gas so it can be burned as a fuel or used as a feedstock. More than half of today's LNG comes from just four countries, Qatar, Indonesia, Australia, and Malaysia. But that's soon likely to shift. New natural gas discoveries promise to send Australia, the U.S., and Africa to the forefront. The companies that build these plants have much to think about. Who will buy their gas? How best to meet buyer specifications? How much LNG will buyers want? Another thing, buyers have to make long-term commitments before suppliers can invest in new units. If this is a golden age for natural gas, it rests upon vast ingenuity and daring. What gulfs of heat and cold we must cross to provide that elixir of warmth anywhere in the world.